Hello, this is Eric D. Kirk for MamaWorld.com, and welcome to the third part of our character animation tutorial series for After Effects. In the previous parts, we created a skeleton for our character and connected her body parts to the skeleton with the puppet tool. In this part, we create an automated walk cycle such that you just need to keyframe her position and she automatically walks accordingly. For this, we use the walk cycle eye expression, which is part of the eye expressions physics bundle. First, we need to set up a parenting structure for our character so that we can move the entire character by moving a single layer. We already have this null layer called body, and if we move it, you can see that all bones and also the arms and legs follow it. We parent the head and the body of the character directly to our body null, and as you can see, now they also move with it. Then, we parent the buggy to the hand goal so that it moves with our hand, no matter how we move it. Finally, we parent the two rods of the buggy to the buggy and the wheels to the respective rods. The wheels also have additional layers for the white highlights. Hence, we also parent each of these highlight layers to the respective wheel layer. As a result, we can now move the hand and all parts of the baby buggy follow. However, if we raise the arm, you can see that the hand does not stay connected to the baby buggy accurately. We can fix this by adding another puppet pin to the skinning we created in the last part. For this, we rotate the hand bone in place, create a new null layer named Hand Extra Null, and place it where the hand touches the buggy. Then we parent it to the hand bone so that it moves with our skeleton. Now we scale down the null so that we cannot confuse it with the hand goal null. Now we select the puppet pin effect on our arm layer and create an additional puppet pin at the position of our new null. To connect the puppet pin to our null, we again use the link puppet pin to layer eye expression. We simply enter the name of the null and apply it to the position of the pin. If we now raise the arm again, you can see that the hand stays nicely connected to the baby buggy. And now we can control the entire puppet with just four layers. The hand goal to move the arm including the baby buggy, the two foot goals to move the feet, and the body null to move the body. To make our walk cycle expression work, we need one more layer which will move the entire character including the body, the arm, and the legs. Hence, we create another null layer, call it Character Master, and parent the body, the hand goal, and both foot layers to it. With the body layer, we can move the body without affecting hand and feet, and with the Character Master layer, we can now move the entire body including hand and feet. Now, let's keyframe the position of our character. At frame zero, she should be at the left of the comp, and three seconds later, she should be at the right. Now it is time to load the walk cycle eye expression. The idea of this expression is that you just animate the master null of our character, and the expression takes care of animating all the other nulls to create a nice walk cycle that fits to your animation. At first sight, the expression seems pretty complex with all its parameters but it is actually not very complicated. We just said that the expression should animate our character by animating the null layers of the individual body parts. So the main thing that this eye expression needs to know are the names of exactly those layers. We enter the name of the left and the right foot goal and the body. Normally you want a character to swing the arms in sync with the legs as they are walking. But since our character is pushing the baby buggy, we don't want to animate the arm and so we don't enter any layer names for the hand goals. In addition, we need to give a layer name for the ground, and you will understand in a second why this is needed. For now, we simply create a basic ground layer by creating a new solid and applying a checkerboard effect to it, so that we can better see it when it is moving. We name the layer ground and enter the same name in the eye expression. Now we bring our character in a neutral position, which means both legs should point straight down, and now we select the body and the foot goal layers and apply the eye expression. As you can see, our character is kind of walking now, but she is doing huge steps. To fix that, we go into the scale section of the eye expression and set the scale of the foot movement and the body movement to 20%. Since we didn't apply the eye expression to any hand goals, we don't bother about the scale of the hands. Now you can see that she is moving pretty nicely, and you can further tweak the movement by adjusting the scale. If you want her to raise her feet higher while walking, for example, you can create the Y part of the scale. If we set it to 40%, you can see that she raises her feet pretty high. If we lower it to 5%,
you can see she is barely raising her feet. If you want to play with different settings, it is a good idea to enable the Auto Apply button. Normally, we need to select the layers and click Apply after any change we do in the eye expression settings. But, if we select the layers and enable Auto Apply, the expressions are automatically updated whenever we change a parameter. So let's set the foot movement scale back to 20 and set the Y scale of the body movement to 80. Now you can see that the body seesaws up and down significantly while she is walking. But we prefer a more subtle effect here and set the body movement back to 20. Let's summarize what you've learned about the walk cycle eye expression so far. You just need a character that is rigged so that you have no layers to animate the legs, arms, and body center individually, and also a master null that all of them are parented to. Then you can simply keyframe the master null to move the character to the left or to the right, and the eye expressions animates all the other nulls to create a nice walk cycle. All you need to do is tell the expression the name of these layers that it should animate and to apply the expression to them. You can fine tune the style of walking by experimenting with the scale parameters. Now, what about this mysterious ground layer? Well, sometimes you want to move the ground instead of moving your character. During the first three seconds of the composition, we've keyframed our character master null to move our character. Now let's say from second four to five, we keyframe the position of the ground. As you can see, as soon as the ground starts moving, the character starts walking on it as if she is walking on a conveyor belt. You can even move the character and the ground simultaneously, and the expression will always know how to adjust the walk cycle accordingly. If you don't need a visible ground layer in your scene, you can of course always turn off the visibility of the ground layer. In this part of the tutorial series, you've learned how to create an automatic walk cycle for your character. At this stage, our rig has a lot of layers. In the next part, I will show you how Zorro can rescue you before you sink into complete layer chaos. Again, this is Eric D. Kirk for MamaWorld.com, and we'll see you next time.